All right, guys, today we are going to be making coil pots. Coil pots is where you use like snake-like pieces to build up and make your own coil pot. So we are also going to work with this um, idea sheet and this kind of gives you ideas of different things that you can do to build up your coil pot. Now, yours won't look like this. <laughs> yours won't be this tall and you probably won't use this many different ideas. But I went ahead and drew this out for you so you could kind of see all the different ideas and kind of how they might stack on top of other ideas. Um, if you want to just pick like one of these, um, to add, because yours, like I said, won't be nearly this tall. It will be much shorter, probably a little bit taller than this, but um, just to kind of give you an idea. So I would probably pick um, just a couple to try to do and incorporate in your project. First thing you need to do though, is we need to make our base. We're gonna make our base um, out of a slab piece of clay. So this is just a thin piece of clay. This is just a lid from one of our slip jars and we are going to trace it. Please don't press it down and use it as a cookie cutter because your clay will just get stuck in there and when you try to pull it out, it'll kind of get all ripped up and mashed up. So what you're gonna do is just set it on top and then grab your needle tool and just trace around it. You can see I like to put it off to the corner so I'm not using that whole huge slab. There we go. Now, oops, I'm going all the way through. There we go. Now this is extra. You can use this to make your coils. I will also give you a little bit of extra clay um, because this won't be quite enough. So I think what I'm going to start by doing is start with a couple of just straight coils. Now, something that might help you is to kind of break some of your clay up into about as equal of pieces as possible. So I'll, maybe I'll just start with about three. I'm gonna set this off to the side so I have room to roll my coils. Now coils, for this kind of a project, it's important that they are consistent. You want them to all be about the same width um, and that is the, definitely the tricky part of this. So you can see I'm rolling this out. You don't want them to be too thick. You also don't want them to be too thin. I always say about your pinky finger is a pretty good indication of about how thick they should be. So I can tell that I, for just a straight coil. I probably got a little bit too much clay and that is okay. So you can see I'm trying to keep it as even as possible. I see right here is just a little bit thicker than the rest of it. So I roll that out a little bit more and that looks pretty great. Now we'll get this slab back out. You might remember that slipping and scoring are the most important parts of clay. That is basically your glue of clay and you're attaching a lot of different pieces together. So you have to make sure that you are attaching them correctly. Um, just like I just said, not slipping and scoring is like if you were going to make a paper collage without glue. You really need to make sure that you are doing this. So what I'm doing is where I'm about to put that coil. So right along the edge of that slab, I'm scratching it up and you can use several different tools. You can use this fork tool. You can use a needle tool. What I'm also going to do is along my coil, I also need to scratch it up. Clay, when it dries and when we fire it in the kiln, it shrinks. So if you have two flat things, what they end up doing is shrinking separately and breaking off from each other and just popping apart. If you scratch up one side and you scratch up the other side and you add that liquid clay in between, you're basically like cementing those two things together and now you have a lock, right? Whereas if they're um, just smacked on top of each other, two flat surfaces, like I say, they just pop off. 
right? They can just slide right off of each other. Whereas if you scratch it up and scratch it up and add that liquid clay in between, you've created a lock. It's not going anywhere. So I've scratched up my coil. I've scratched up where I'm putting it. Grab any tool you want to scoop out some slip. Consider slip to be very similar to glue. You don't wanna add so much that it's oozing out. Your clay gets really hard to work with if it gets too wet. And this slip is liquid clay. So if you put too much of this, you're gonna make your clay really difficult to work with. And like I said, it also just gets quite messy. Okay, so you need a little bit, you don't need a whole lot. Okay, so now I'm setting it right on top of that edge where I scored it up. I'm giving it a little bit of a press down, not so much that I'm smushing my coil, but enough where I'm really pushing those two parts together to make that lock. Okay, so I'm pushing, and then I'm getting to where they're connecting. And so I am going to cut it off right where it connects, and you can kind of smooth it out so you don't really see that connection. Let us zoom you guys in a little bit. I can get a little bit of a better view. Okay, now if you did have anything ooze out, you can kind of clean that up like that. Okay, I think I'm gonna do one more straight one before I start trying to do anything fancy. If it helps you, you can maybe roll a few coils before you start trying to put anything together. So then you can kind of get in a rhythm of building if that's what you want to do, or you can do what I'm doing right now and just kind of make your coils as you need them. It is up to you. Okay, I'm gonna kind of see that's about where it needs to be as far as being as thick as my pinky. I'll pull this back over. Scratching up where I'm putting it, but also scratching up my coil itself. And then right where it's starting to overlap, I'm just gonna cut that off and make sure I've pressed everything down really good and smooth out that connection. So let's look at it from the side. You guys are gonna wanna try not to pick it up too much because when the clay is pretty wet, it uh, you know can bend and move around on you. So try not to pick it up, but I wanna show you guys the sides. Um, they're looking pretty good. You can kind of clean up that separation between your coils. Because if that slip kind of oozes out a little bit, it sometimes kind of fills in that space between your coils. And I like to see that space. Okay, now I might try to start doing some of my fancy things. Um, I love the uh, spirals and they're pretty easy to incorporate. You can do a whole section of spirals. Maybe we'll do that. I'll roll out enough um, coils real quick so I can make some spirals for you. So give me just a minute. Okay, so I have a pretty long coil. It will not need to be this long. Um, but here's what you're gonna do. When you start to make your spirals, you need to do the same thing. You need to scratch it up and add a little bit of slip. Be careful not to add too much because you don't want to ooze it all out over your spirals and then it won't look like a spiral. Okay, so I'm going to start curling it in on itself. And you can stop whenever you want, however big you want it. I think I'm going to make it I'm trying not to squeeze it too much because I don't want to smash down that cool spiral I made. Okay, maybe I'll stop it about there. And I'm gonna, instead of just cutting it straight across like this, I'm going to kind of try to cut it so it makes a flat edge. See what I mean? Instead of having like a part that just is sticking out, so then it can sit flat. Okay, I'm gonna make I don't know, probably quite a few. 
So but I'll probably time lapse this for a moment. I'm just gonna scratch up this whole thing. I wonder if I can get two more out of it. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna make sure this one is always close because it is important that they are about the same size. Okay, so I don't know how many I'm gonna need, so I think I wanna start um, putting them together. So, this bottom section, <clears throat> I'm going to, you can really probably just go ahead and score up. I'm gonna score up the bottom. I can wait to score up the top, I guess. I'm gonna score up the sides because they are going to need to attach to each other. So like that, and then wherever I'm starting my first one, I'm gonna go ahead and score it. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of slip. Again, you don't want too much, but I'm going to stick it on there. You need to kind of push it down, wiggle it in there without smashing down any of your coils too much. All right, that's looking pretty good. You can see I'm kind of curving my coil a little bit or my spiral a little bit. So it kind of follows that curve of the, um, of our circle here. So I'm scratching up, I'm doing this again, finding out exactly where it goes. Now, it's kind of hard to see. Let me, let me try to pick it up for you. So if you can see, if I attach those two right there, there's that little triangle space right there. Some of you, I might want to leave that little open triangle, which I think is maybe what I'm going to do. But you can see there's also the option of adding little coil. Well, they're actually really not coils. They're more just like little balls, little spheres um, in between if you don't want any like empty open space. So you can see spheres can fill gaps or be decorative. So they can um, fill in little gaps like that, or you can make a whole row of spheres. Um, so if I was going to do that, which I, like I said, I, I don't think I am, you would want them all to be about the same size because those gaps are going to be about the same size. Score it up, score up where you're putting it. And I would probably do that before I added the next one. So then I would scratch that up, score it up, and then attach the next one. So it would be like that. But like I said, I think I'm going to skip it. I don't think I mind that little gap. Oh, and I forgot, because now these two are touching, I need to put a little bit of slip on the side. So then I'm gonna push the two together, but also push down. So we're looking like that, friends. I'm gonna keep going. Okay, and you can see now why it's uh, pretty important for them to be all about the same size, so they're all about the same height. I'm getting there on this level. Got two more to add. Now this last one is the tricky part. So um, my coil was actually just a little bit too skinny to fill this space. So you might have noticed that I added just a little bit more to it. So it fills that space completely. All right, so that little section is looking great. So when I have you guys working on these, you guys will be working on a little piece of cardboard. I should have had mine out already. And then it makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of turn it without actually picking it up. So now I can show you a little bit better the sides of it. And that's what we're looking at so far. I think it looks, ah, <laughs> I think it looks really great. So I like to, between every like decorative piece, like that, I like to just put a flat coil. So if we look at this, you can see between this decorative piece and this decorative piece, there's a flat one, there's a flat one here. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier if you wanna do another decorative section to be working on top of a, a flatter surface. So I'm gonna do that next. And that one's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna time-lapse that. 
Now, something I like to do, it's hard for you to see, but again, there's that little triangle gap. Something I like to do is only score my um, coil where it's going to touch, because I don't like for it to be really roughed up where you might be able to see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score it up where it's attaching and add the slip where it's attaching, but only where it's attaching. So attach that little piece. Now I can see that it's about to touch right here. So I'm just gonna kind of reach under, score it up, add my little slip and stick it down. I just think that makes it look a little bit nicer because in that little crack that I know you guys can't see right now, but when you look at it from the side, you would be able to see that that underside of that coil is scored up, scratched up. Um, and I don't really li like that. So you can see I'm just doing it one little spot at a time. We're looking good, guys. Okay, I think what I want to do, see that's what the side is looking like. I think what I wanna do is add one more of this one um, and then add a top flat one. You can see it just kinda makes it look pretty nice to have just a leveled lip on top. Um, and then I think I am going to be done. Um, but just to kind of show you, there's some other ones. This spiral one, instead of doing like one single spiral, what you would do to get that is start spiraling from one side and then start spiraling from the other. Obviously this one is way too long, but that's what a double spiral is. It looks more like that kind of a shape. So that's what that is. And then this one looks like a single spiral, but that's because you just can't see the other side. The double part of the spiral is wrapping around. There's also um, the option of working with vertical and horizontal, just like smaller pieces. So you would just cut a bunch that are like this, that are all the same size and just put, I mean, this one has three right next to each other. So you just do one, two, three, and then it has three horizontal ones. And then you would go one, two, three, stacking them up. Um, so you really have lots of options, friends. Let me roll out. I'm probably gonna have to use multiple coils to make this whole little sneaky piece. So I'll start that off real quick. So this one is a little bit tricky. You need to score up probably both sides of your coil because it's going to be coiled in on itself right there and right here, but it also needs to be scored up where it's touching the pieces above and below. So um, what I would probably do first is build it not on your pot. You can see I'm adding my little slip real quick, not too much. Honestly, my little uh, needle tool is pretty perfect for adding just the perfect amount of slip. So I would actually probably start to build this just on your canvas rather than trying to make that um, ornate design on your pot itself. So. I'm just gonna start curling it in like that. And I want it to be the same height for every little like bump. Hope you guys can see it. I just realized I was a little bit off the screen. Okay, so I want this next little bump to be the same height. I also wanna make sure I'm making those parts that I scored be the inside and not show those scratched up parts. You also kind of want to push them together so they're making that connection really well. Okay, so I got about that far with that coil, but thankfully I have another one ready to go. There, I just set it on there really fast and I definitely need it to be a little bit longer. So I think I am ready to 
score up the top of this. Now, because these are a lot closer, there's really not any big gaps. I'm just gonna go ahead and score the whole top of this. And then the bottom of this. All right, now we will see if I made it long enough. Just gonna try to set it on there first and then I'll go back and kind of push everything in and clean up where this connects. If you're not making that good connection, you guys, um, when it dries or when we fire it in our kiln, it really will just pop right off. Um, so do your very best to make some good connections. Okay, the last thing I wanna do to finish mine up, that's what it's looking like so far from the side, is I am going to just add one more clean coil along the top to make a leveled lip. Okay, and before you say you're done, go back Make sure all your connections are great. Clean up anything that you think looks like it has a little bit too much texture or anywhere where some slip might have oozed out. And you'll be happy um, that you did later. All right, you guys, this is looking pretty great. I might take a little bit more time to smooth it out, but that is looking so cool. I can't wait to see what kind of ideas you implement. Um, let's get started. <laughs> 